This is an example of how we can use the EPM report action pane to create ad hoc reports. We begin by dragging the account dimension down to the row axis and the time dimension down to the column axis to instantly create a report. You will see there is no longer a report code area within the Excel sheet. The report starts in column A and in row 1. Double clicking you can drill down into the accounts in the rows and the time in the columns. Notice the ability to drill into columns while other columns remain intact on the report. This is a new feature in 10.0. Here we can also drag dimensions directly onto the Excel sheet to place them exactly where we want them. The dimension ID flashes green letting the user know that Excel recognizes that this is a valid BPC dimension ID. Here we drag account as rows and time as columns and instantly a report is rendered. We can use standard Excel formatting to format the report. Double clicking again gives us the ability to drill down. BPC instantly recognizes the structure of a basic report that rows are on the left and columns are at the top. Using this intelligence, the report writer instantly understands what the user is trying to produce. Even nesting rows with another dimension such as company is instantly understood by the report. Another way BPC 10 makes ad hoc reporting easier is its ability to recognize user input directly. Just by typing something that BPC recognizes as a member ID or a member description, BPC will take that information and start to produce a report. When BPC finds an ID or description that could have multiple values, the user is presented with a message box where they then clarify for BPC what ID or description they intended. Here in this example we see that France shows up both as a company code and an intercompany dimension, and the user is asked to clarify. Again, with the system knowledge of rows on the left and columns on the top, a report is instantly rendered. BPC also recognizes that any member IDs or descriptions above the columns are page values. So instantly, numbers in the report then represent those values. For this example, we type in cash as an account, then we switch it to inventory, as you see the numbers update, and finally we identify the currency, US dollars, which then it switches from euros to US dollar values. Finally, the last option to create a report is using the report features of the EPM toolbar. The user can click New Report and from here set the options for rows, columns, and page dimensionality. Again, drag and drop functionality is used to define rows, columns, and page dimensions. Finally, clicking OK will render the report. Once the report is created, you can then edit the report from the menu options. You can see that all the advanced options and features of creating a report are within this tab window, creating more sophisticated reports. Options like changing the report to an input schedule, zero suppression, sorting, and filtering, as well as an entire library of features are available to create the exact behavior and options end users are looking for. Additionally, Making refinements around what members are to be presented in the report can be made. Specific members, filtered lists, and special selections are all accommodated through the report editor using this interface. In this example, we show how to cherry pick certain accounts within the account hierarchy to be rendered on the report. Selecting the accounts, selecting the options, of the level and then moving those accounts over into the right hand side pane shows only those accounts. Here for the time dimension we're showing how to only display the months or the base level of the year. Again moving them to the right action pane identifies them to be rendered on the report and then finally clicking OK and the report is rendered. Now we're going to look at some report navigation options. We create a simple report here looking at a balance sheet and two months worth of data. You can see again how we can use a mix of dragging and dropping and typing in recognized members. In addition to recognized dimension members, you can enter Excel calculations. 
Here we create a variance column to compare the difference of two months. Notice how the formula will carry down automatically and stick with the parameters of the report. The first navigation option we're going to look at is the back capability. Simply by clicking the back button you can go back to the previous views of the report. Here we're double clicking and drilling down and then we go up and click the back button to see a previous view of the report. Users can also change the expansion behavior. Using the expand button we can change the expansion behavior to member and descendants. This will return the member we click on and all the members below it. Double clicking will show all the members underneath that parent member. Then we can use the collapse button to collapse the view back down. Then we can change the expansion options to the member and children. This will return the member that is double clicked and just the direct children or one level below. Again, we can use the Collapse option to go back. Now we'll nest in a company dimension again, showing the Keep functionality. Here we'll drag over the company dimension, nesting it in with the rows of the accounts. And then we'll drill into some accounts, double clicking until we get down to the base level members of the current assets. We're going to select cash, inventory, and prepaid expenses by hitting my control button and clicking those accounts. And then we're going to click keep. Now the report will only show those three accounts. You can see using the company dimension we can expand on the companies while it holds just those three accounts that were selected. This has been a review of the BPC reporting features in the EPM reporting tool.